Welcome back. Now that you know what's coming, let's get started. In this second set of videos, we're going to cover what you need to know about installing Redis or connecting to a hosted Redis and how to use the Redis command line interface or the Redis CLI. Video 2.1 is installation. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to install Redis. First off, let's take a look at what could be the easiest possible way for those of you that are OSX users. Homebrew is a package management system. It can automatically download, compile, and install applications with their dependencies for you. So let's install Homebrew. Here's the Homebrew site. And to install Homebrew, you see you simply run this Ruby command script. Copy it, paste it into your terminal. Now I got an error that I already have Homebrew installed. You should not get that error unless you do as well. If it asks you to install Xcode command line tools, you will need to say yes also. Once you have brew installed, installing Redis is as simple as executing brew install Redis. Again, I already have it installed, but you should get a different message. Now, one of the benefits of using an open database such as Redis is the availability of the source code. So an alternative to homebrew on OS X or if you're installing on a Linux or a Unix system is to simply download the Redis source code and build it yourself. In fact, this is the approach that is detailed on the Redis IO website. You see here under download, as you can see, you have several options available to you, including downloading older versions or early releases, but generally you'll just want to use the latest stable version of Redis. Now, if you look down the page just a little bit, you'll see that there is an installation section, and this shows a few commands to download and build Redis. So what we'll want to do is give this a try, and you can generally copy and paste these into your terminal. I'm going to do something a little bit different on my OSX box because I don't have wget. I'm going to do a similar thing using curl o, but other than that, it's the same commands. So I would download Redis. Now that I have that downloaded, I would execute this command. And I'm just copying and pasting from their website. We're going to cd into the Redis, and then we can just do make. Obviously, you'll need to have the developer tools installed for this to work. Those are generally, in Linux, you'll have them. In uh, OS X, you can install them. All right, and now we have it installed. Now, the Redis project itself doesn't directly support Windows. However, Microsoft, with its open tech group, uh, does. So those of you who use Windows should be covered in this. In your case, you'll want to clone their GitHub repo and use Visual Studio to build the Redis database. So you go to github.com slash msopentech slash redis and you'll see that their project is here you would go ahead and clone this repo using git clone the command is over here you grab this url come into your directory a git clone redis if you don't have git you'll need to make sure you have git installed and then you would build the project. The information on that is also here, down here into using how to build Redis using Visual Studio. You go to this website and download the Visual Studio community, and you should be able to get started from there. There's uh, more information on this and how to get it up and running on Windows. So. Now that you've hopefully built Redis without any issues, you should be able to start it with a simple redis-server command. 
Note that by default it will create its database file in the same place from which you started. Therefore, I'd, I'd recommend always starting the database from the same folder or directory if you're not using a configuration file. Alternatively, if you start Redis Server and specify a configuration file, you may set the database file name and location. So look to your Redis installation for the default config file that you can modify if you would like or use either way. And it will likely be something like slash user slash local slash etsy or etc slash redis.con. I'll show you that. So I have user local etsy redis conf. That's where all my configuration is. And if I want to start redis server, I can specify that file and I'm up and running. So at this point, you should have a working copy of Redis on your system. But if you can't get it working for some reason, you don't need to worry too much. Uh, there are other options. So in the next video, we'll take a look at an alternative to running Redis locally on your machine, and that is running Redis remotely on somebody else's server.